The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh-oh, y'all, you've done, done it now. You let me loose on Easter Day. Uh, who knows how this is going to go, how long it's going to go, but hey, I'm excited. I'm excited. Y'all look a little worried, but I'm excited. Uh, this is going to be fun. The first thing that I want to say is thank you so much for being here. Honestly, thank you so much. Uh, for taking the time out to come worship with us on Easter morning here at, at St. Columns. It means the world to me. This is what church should look like each and every Sunday, and I am just inspired to see all of y'all, and I'm happy, and uh, I'm just glad to be here with you. Um, and we at St. Columns, we've been thinking a lot about in the past year about who we are as a church community, what makes us different, and what we can offer to the world, and, and what we want to be. And what we have decided is that we want to walk in love as Christ loved us. We want to walk in love and, and to really do our best to love each other as a community and to love others out there in the world in our daily lives. And all of us know exactly how difficult that really is 
to try to love our neighbors as ourselves, to try to follow that great commandment that Jesus gave us, gave us. We know how difficult that is from day to day to actually go out there and love one another. And the biggest difficulty, I would say, is that we're afraid, if we're honest with ourselves. The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is fear, right? What if we put ourselves out there and we say something like, I love you uh, and I, I want to be your servant. I want to help you out in, in the way that I can. And, and people pull back and they say, uh, yeah, you know what? No thanks. That's kind of weird. You just said I love you and uh, we just met each other, right? Um, and so to love is to take a risk. And we're afraid at times to take a risk. The opposite of love is fear. Christ loved us without fear, didn't he, right? He went all the way to the cross, walking in love to show us exactly how to do that without fear. And today, really, there is a word that is given to us, a gift that is given to us at Easter. And that is my favorite word in all of Christianity, in all of religion, anything, doesn't matter what religion it is, the word is grace. Grace. Y'all love that word too? Tell me if you love that word. Amen, grace? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm not alone. So grace is amazing. And grace is, of course, an undeserved gift from God. A gift that we are given that uh, we didn't do anything uh, to deserve. And there is no greater grace than the day of Easter. Because as humanity, you know, on the day of Good Friday, we took a shot at God. We took our best shot. We went to sock God in the mouth by crucifying his only son on a cross. The most shameful death that we could imagine at the time, uh, the death of an empire to just hang you up there on the cross in front of everybody to see your, your, the suffering. And we did that to the most innocent man that there ever could be, God's only son. We gave it our best shot. We swang for the fence with our evil and our sinfulness. And it could have been the end of us, right? What, it could have been God said, okay, you know what? That's it. I tried my best to love you, and, and now I, I don't know. But three days later, grace. Three days later, newness of life and uncontainable grace that cannot be stopped. The love of God that cannot be stopped even by death. That grace is what we are all given today. And I want to tell you what that means for each and every one of us. The grace and the gift that we receive on Easter Day is the gift of hope, to love without fear. A hope which allows us to love without fear. And you see it in the disciples, right? They were as scared as they could be when Jesus was crucified. They were scattered, man. They were out of the picture. And Peter, we know, denied Jesus. He said, I don't have anything to do with that guy uh, because if I do, I'm going to get myself killed, right? And all the other disciples, except, uh, you know, John in John's gospel says, yeah, I, I was there. Uh, but all the other disciples were gone when Jesus was crucified, but something in them changes after they see their risen Lord. They're ready. They're ready. They have a hope which endures, a hope which allows them not to be afraid of death anymore, not to be afraid to love anymore, right? They are ready. They're ready to go. And that's that hope. Now, let me tell you a little bit about hope. I want to say this because I'm not, I'm not stupid, and I don't think any of us are stupid. We know that a man who dies and who comes back three days later, none of us have ever seen anything like that, right? It's kind of anathema to science, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense. And especially in the modern world, it's one of those beliefs that's the most difficult for us to believe, right? To, to really understand and, and really follow. But let me tell you this, I don't know with my mind that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead three days later. I don't know. I can't go back in history and prove that to you. You can't go back in history and prove to me that he didn't, but I do hope that he did. Very, very much. My hope is the certainty that I have that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead because if Christ was raised from the dead, and I can believe that in my heart, all of a sudden I am given the gift of grace that means that I can love without fear. I can love without fear. Who I am, what I am, all the things that have been given to me, life, love, relationships, all of that stuff is eternal. 
All of it is eternal. It cannot be taken away from me because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And sure and certain hope, I believe. And hope is not, I saw this, uh, this bumper sticker when I was driving through, uh, you know, the line at school, pickup line, and you, you sit there and you're looking for anything to entertain you. Uh, I saw this bumper sticker that said, hope is not a plan. Hope is not a plan. And, the, and I was immediately kind of, you know, it's kind of a downer. It's like, I, I, yeah, I get that. Hope is not a plan. And I get the idea that, like, you can't just say, I'm, I'm going to live in hope and not have any other plan and just kind of walk around uh, optimistic, like, like in a rose, the, road is, the world is rosy and I don't have anything to worry about. Hope is not a plan. I get that. But hope is a perspective. Hope is a way of looking at the world and saying, you know what, there is a war in Ukraine. You know what, children are dying. You know what, there is suffering that happens in my community, there is suffering that happens in every community, and I could drink from the cup of cynicism and say, you know what, this, this world is a bad old place, and you know, I'm just gonna do my best to live my life and, uh, and try to be good where I can, or, I can live in the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and I can risk myself to love everyone, to love as best that I can. And I know that love can feel like an empty word, but love is that same self-giving force that Jesus used to transform this world. And we don't follow, we don't worship an empty tomb. We're not just here to worship for a day and say, hey, this is good, all right, I'm going to uh, get a little bit of Easter. I'm going to give a high five to the preacher on the way out, which, which you can. I'll give you a high five if you'd like to. I'm going to give a high five to the preacher on the way out, and I'll see you next Easter, preacher. No, it has to be cultivated. You know, hope is one of those things that we have to grow. It's a skill that we have to use in this world so that we can love without fear. You don't get a basketball at your birthday and on the first day learn how to dunk, right? You don't get a soccer ball and know how to do a rainbow heel flick and then kick it into the top corner where the spiders live. I'm a soccer fan, by the way. All right? So listen, y'all, all I'm saying is this. Today there is a gift that is offered to us. Should we choose to accept it? Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and what that means for us is that we can find within ourselves an inner peace. We can choose hope. And with that hope, we can live in this world without fear. We can live and love in this world without fear. And here at St. Columns, we invite you to walk in love with us as best as we can, giving ourselves for each other each and every day in God's holy community. And I ask you to join us as we move forward. And I thank you for being here again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.